Hello seekers welcome to my channel I am Muhammad Anfitkhar and this lecture is uh, also a part of developmental biology series and in today's lecture we are going to discuss the role of differential cell affinity in morphogenesis but what is morphogenesis let us revise it a little bit so we know that in bodies of organisms such as in our bodies there are a number of types of cells and these cells are not random randomly arranged rather these cells are organized uh, into various structures such as let's say our hands and feet and heart and brain etc now let's talk about two examples such as our hand and our feet both of these structures are made up of similar type of cells bone cells cartilage cell muscle cells neurons and other cells but what is making these two structures look different and work differently is because the organization of cell in these two parts is different so somehow the cell must be ordered to create different shapes and make different connections and this construction of organized form is what is called morphogenesis now for this morphogenetic process or morphogenesis to occur the cells in an embryo must be able to adhere to other cells of same or different type they have to migrate over from one place to another in embryo and the gene expression should be induced in neighboring cells depending upon the need of the arrangement so these are what we are going to study while studying the cellular basis of morphogenesis in this particular topic in this particular lecture what we are going to do is we are going to study about the adhesion of cells each other and in that in adhesion in particular we are going to study about the differential cell affinity and this is based on the experiments by researchers named townies and hart fratter and these were performed in 1955 by that time by 1955 it had been discovered that amphibian tissue when it is placed in alkaline solution it dissociates into single cells so these researchers they prepared single cell suspension from each of the three germ layers of amphibian embryo soon after the neural tube had formed now two of the uh, two of these single cell suspensions could be combined in various ways and when the ph of solution was normalized uh, from alkaline to the neutral ph the cells adhere to one another forming aggregates on agar coated petri dishes now by using embryos from species having different cell type uh, size, cells of different size and colors these two researchers were able to follow the behavior of recombined cells let's say that they took the ectodermal cells from one species and took the endodermal cells or mesodermal cells from other species and in the same way they were able to track where which cell is going where now the result of their experiments was for trying king first of all let's see what their experiment looked like looked like this is what we are talking about a one species a presumptive epidermal cells were taken and from another species embryo neuroplate neural plate cells were taken now we can differentiate between these two cells based upon their shape and their color etc now these cells were placed in alkaline medium in order to dissociate the cells and then these cells were combined together when the ph was normalized spontaneously these cells reaggregated and after the reaggregation segregation of cell type occurred as we can see in the cross section that the epidermal cells are outside and the neural cells are inside but we are going to now look at the text relevant to it so the result of their experiment was striking the researchers found that reaggregated cells become spatially segregated it is not going to stay this same uh, aggregate of cell that is randomly arranged but rather the cell types are going to get segregate from each other and that is instead of the two cell type remaining mixed each type sorts on its own region we know that this is what kind of arrangement 
these epidermal cells and neural cells have in the embryo so they are going to arrange themselves the same way that they normally did or used to do thus when epidermal or ectodermal cells and mesodermal cells are brought together in a mixed aggregate the epidermal cells move to the periphery of the aggregate and the mesodermal cells move to inside importantly researchers found that the final position of the aggregated cell reflects their respective position in embryo it means that the rearranged mesoderm migrates centrally with respect to epidermis and adhering to the epidermal surface adhering to the inner epidermal surface just like what happens in the embryo which is uh, intact mesoderm also migrates centrally with respect to gut or endoderm and when the three germ layers are mixed together the endoderm separates from ectoderm and mesoderm and it is then enveloped by them in the final configuration the ectoderm is on the periphery and the endoderm is internal and mesoderm lies in the region between them just like what happens in in uh, in an intact embryo these aggregates of cell are going to segregate from each other the cell types are going to segregate from each other and they are going to arrange themselves in the same way that they would have been at the same place that they would have been when they were in the embryo and this is what it look like looks like when epidermal cells and mesodermal cells were that made to form an aggregate and that aggregate then segregated this is what the result was the mesodermal cells on the inside and the epidermal cells at the periphery similarly when mesodermal and endodermal cells were made to make an aggregate this was the result the endodermal cells moved towards the in, uh, inside while the mesodermal cells were on the periphery of the endoderm and when the three cells uh, the three germ uh, cells from three germ layers epidermis mesoderm and endoderm all of them were made to form the aggregate this was the result which we can see that the at this endoderm is get separated from ectoderm and mesoderm and then it is in alum it is then enveloped by the two layers the cells from the two layers and when the cell from neural plate and epidermis are allowed to form an aggregate this is what the result is as we have seen earlier neural plate cells on inside and epidermis cells on outside and when neural plate cells and axial mesoderm cells and epidermis cells these three types are made into an aggregate they are they form an aggregate and then segregate this is what happens outside is the epidermis and on its inside is the mesodermal cells and on its inside are the neural plate cells so these cells have arranged themselves have segregated and arranged themselves in the same way that they do in the embryo so this was happening in vitro this was not happening in an intact embryo so the researchers interpreted this finding in terms of selective affinity which means that each cell type has selective affinity for certain cell types the inner surface of ectoderm has positive affinity for mesodermal cells and negative affinity for endoderm whereas mesoderm has positive affinity for both ectodermal and endodermal cells that is why ectodermal cells have mesoderm arranged on their inside but not the endoderm and similarly the mesodermal cells have ectodermal cells and endodermal cells both of them arranged on their either side so mimicry of normal embryonic structure by cell aggregates is also seen in the recombination of epidermis and neural plate cell as we just have seen in the diagram the presumptive epidermal cells migrate to periphery as they would have in the intact embryo and the neural plate cell migrate inward forming a structure that is reminiscent of neural tube that is not a complete neural tube but just a look alike and we have also seen that when the axial mesoderm or notochord cells are added to suspension of presumptive epidermal and presumptive neural cells cell aggregation result in external epidermal layer a centrally located neural tissue and a layer of mesodermal tissue between them this is what we are talking about so somehow the cells are able to sort out into their proper embryonic positions the researchers 
Howard Frater and his colleagues concluded that selective affinities change during development. For development to occur, cells must interact differently with other cell populations at specific time, and such changes in cell affinity are extremely important in the process of morphogenesis. So this was all about the differential cell affinity, which means that cells have selective affinity for certain cells have positive affinity for certain cells and have negative affinity for certain cells. In other words, we can say that cells like to adhere with certain type of cells, but at the same time, they do not like to adhere with other type of cells. And so today's lecture, today's this lecture gets concluded at this point. In the next lecture, we are going to discuss the thermodynamic model of cell interaction. So see you in the next lecture. If you like this video, if you found this video helpful, then please do like and comment. Do not forget to subscribe and turn the notification.